Hey guys and welcome to another arena tutorial and today we're gonna speak about the Britons. It's a foot archer civilization, town centers cost 50% less wood in castle age, archers except skirmishers have plus one rage in castle age, plus one rage in imperial age, shepherds work 25% faster, unique unit is a longbowman, unit decks are yeomen, foot archer plus one uh, range, plus two tower attack, and warwolf turbat do triple shots, true bucks, I don't know, who cares, <laughs> do less damage. Uh, team bonus, archery range, work 20% faster. Okay, so let's see this sieve. Obviously, we want to go either Arbus with the sieve or Longbows. Uh, there are two, there are a few cases where actually you might want to go champions, for example, if you fight in a sieve like Aztecs or so and you're facing eagle warriors. And so of even you can see Cavaliers for some weird scenarios. And obviously Onager. They don't have the best siege, but their archers and traps are just insane. Their mics are quite bad, so that's not the way to go. And uh, let's see, let's see how to play the sieve on Arena. This game I'll be playing versus Holo Holo, and he is the Turks. So this is an interesting matchup. Turks is a very strong sieve on Arena and actually Brit is a very good counter to it because well what counter best uh, Janissaries than Archers and this is the reason why I went for Archers in this game and let me show you my build order for, th for this. So we start with 6 on food as usually then we go 4 on wood uh, pretty standard up to Castle Age I like to delete those useless walls whenever I can, they are not so important. So, 4 on wood, then we go to the boar with one villager, then 4 more on berries. Be careful if you shift click and delete all your walls together, be careful that you don't select walls outside because it sometimes happens to me. Uh, so yeah, so 4 on uh, berries here, then 1 more on the boar. And obviously we want to lure the deers, especially when you have four deers, it's so important to get them. Well, even three is good, but the four, uh, the more the better. Okay, so we get uh, 20 villagers, uh, and all of them on foot up to the 21. Then we get two more on wood. Well, we keep luring the deers. For new players, completely new players, if you struggle with luring the deers, it's even worse to making a meal on four deers. On three, I'm not that sure, but on four, it's definitely worth it. So two more on wood, then two more on gold. Another two on wood here, so we have eight in total on wood. Don't leave idols. And then we use the last one to make the barracks. Because he was Turks, I knew that I want to go archers, I knew that I want to deny a possible forward castle. Archers are a great counter to forward aggression. And uh, well, even if he's not doing a forward castle, I'm sure that he would go for Janissaries. So having archers at your base will be quite nice to fight those Janissaries. Okay, so we do the next two villagers on gold as well. We want to do an archery range and a blacksmith. And then with 29 population we click up to castle age. And let's see how I spread that. So we go 6 on gold because we want to make archers, we want to, add what, uh, want to make monks soon, I'll do a monastery. We go hard on, on stone, 10 on, eh, on stone, sorry, on wood, 10 on wood here. And now even adding one more to gold. So 7 on total on gold, 10 on wood, 5 farmers. This is like you can play with this a bit, but you want to have wood and gold eh, early on. So I see I the archers. This game he didn't go forward, he did the castle at home. So even though I didn't kill any forward villagers, it was nice enough uh, to defend later. Anyway, getting the monastery up as early as you can, 
because you want to take those relics, you want to take map control. It's better not to show him your archers uh, until it's, uh, well, until you have no choice because you want to keep him in the dark. That's exactly why we do our buildings out of sight. We don't want him to see you going for an archer range or a stable. And you also don't want him to see you doing a market and a blacksmith because if he knows that you're doing a market and blacksmith, um, well, he knows that you're not doing military. So it's always good to make your buildings, feudal age buildings, at the back a bit out of sight. So we add down setters instantly, one on gold, one on wood, and we keep booming and keep massing archers. Um, well, Hero is probably waiting for the monk, but we keep making archers because, you see, he is going for the Janissaries. That's what the Turk player will usually go for. Let's speed this up. Now we go, we have hard, uh, a lot of builders on gold. So it's a uh, it's good idea to use them uh, to make some farms and we try to catch uh, any monks. That's why I was guarding these relics with my scout. You just put him on aggressive st on stance on patrol between the relics and it might do the job versus uh, possible monks. Yeah, I lost my monk here but I killed the Latka which is very important. You see my Latka, I'm not even paying attention. I'm here microing my archers and bam, the scout is doing his own. The scout will kill it all by its own. Okay, so a good thing when uh, you realize that he has a lot of uh, Genesaris and you're struggling to micro to add its uh, to add a second archer range and also ballistics. You want to have ballistics when you're fighting Genesaris because it will give you a huge advantage since well Genesaris do not get ballistics. Here my scout, I forgot about him, he was an aggressive stance, but he died, but he did his job, he got one, uh, one monk. Okay, so you want to keep messing farms and you want to keep messing military, non-stop. It's a boom with making military, it's not a pure boom. Okay, now we got the university up, I wasn't paying attention here. I was, I want to go for the relics, but I realized he has too many janissaries. So I decided I have to wait for the ballistics, and with ballistics it will be much easier to take the fights. Don't forget to make lumber camps, uh, like, pay attention to your lumber camps. If it's there too far away from the woodland, it's a good idea to, to add more. Okay, here I had the ballistics, so, well, I was taking some bad fights, but... But without ballistics it would have been even worse. Actually, I killed everything that was nice. I even converted one Janissary. So you can see how important Ballistics is. Okay, once I saw the Siege Workshop, I knew he was going to push. So adding, um, adding a Mangonel to defend versus Rams is quite important. I did it a bit too late, I think. We will see now, I don't remember really. And going on stun early on is also very important because in this kind of uh, situation, usually the two players will want to forward you with a castle, so you want to have a castle in your base uh, for defense purposes. I even kept making archery ranges and here I had too many on gold, you need to pay attention on that. When there are too many villagers, you need to send them on wood. So I kept adding uh, ranges. Market is always important to have, like because we went for a blacksmith and archery range. I don't have a market, and uh, it's hard to balance your economy without a market. Britain's archers are so nice with extra range five plus three. They do quite well versus Mangonels. And this kind of scenarios when you're fighting with archers and mangonels versus mangonels, most important thing is to kill the siege with your own mangonels while focusing on the genesaurus with your archers because, well, my own archers can do shit versus siege and my mangonels don't do very well versus genesaurus, so I need to try and micro a bit. Okay, so I was getting close to click to Imperial Age, I was still trying to defend. Keeping them on Gonella was quite important while trying to focus on the Genesaris. My archer micro is not the best, but well, with Briton archers, anyone can do it. Here I took a bad fight, actually quite bad, I'm not killing anything. 
Oh boy, that was bad. Okay, so once you're at this situation, it's a good idea to use your market to balance your economy and to click up to Imperial Age. Also, I get the stone for the castle. So doing it here is quite good, securing all of my economy. Well, I could have dived even a bit more forward to secure the passage completely, but I was scared that he will come with siege. And well, I should have clicked up, I should have used the market to click up. Anyway, when we are on the way to Imperial Age, like now, Messing Arbalest is the way to go. You want to have as many as uh, you can. Now, I knew that he would probably switch from Janissaries because, well, you don't want to fight with Janissaries versus Briton Arbalest. So, there were two options that I thought he might do. Either uh, Hussars or Cav Archers. But he surprised me as far as I remember. He did them a bit uh, late. So I kept adding ranges and I decided, well, if he will do Siege, uh, the best way to counter Siege, at least in my opinion with Britons, is if you don't have enough economy like I do, you don't have enough farmers for like uh, for a lot of like have Siege uh, is a way to go. Onagers can be quite good versus, uh, versus Siege Rams. Now adding a second castle, even to secure the gold, getting the yeoman upgrade, getting the arbalest. That's the way to go here. Could have added more farmers. As I said in previous videos, you usually want to have around uh, 50 farmers, no matter your civilization. For some you want more, for some you want a bit less. But 50 is, is perfect for most sieves. And now I realized, well, I have the advantage, it's time for us to push. And it's time to add the traps. And with traps you want to have that Warwolf. It's a sick uh, technology. And then I saw the siege rams and I thought to myself, okay, this is dangerous. Because yes. Uh, slow down a bit. Yes, my Arbalus will erect his Janissaries, but my Arbalus are so bad versus Siege. And this is when I decided to add the Onager upgrade. Arbalus with Yeoman with Onagers together is quite a strong combination. And I'm adding my Siege workshops, gonna edit them a bit earlier. And another castle. Cannons are quite useless here versus Britons. I was, but I was scared some cannons would snipe my traps, so I kill the siege worship first, and then we go for the castle. And now I have the onagers, and what you want to do is you want to focus your onagers on the rams, and you want to attack the rest with your arbalest. That's the way to go here. The onagers are not really for offensive purposes here with Britons. It's mainly for defensive purposes. You can good, get a few good shots on this ground attack to kill those uh, Hussars. And when you realize, well, he now will switch to full siege and uh, and rams, uh, full siege rams and Hussars because Janissaries are useless. Halves can be quite good uh, addition to this. Uh, this combination that we have here, ground attacks, super important, even if it may not always work. Now you see, when they are all together, Arbalest and Onagers, it's, always, it's so hard to stop them. You need either a huge amount of Hussars, or you need some uh, crazy micro with your own cannons and stuff. Since the onagers are doing the job versus the rams, I even saved the castle here. And also, well, on Arena you, I didn't talk about this before, you want to expand, you want to take all the resources in the middle, it's very, very important. Especially in the post team, like, you want those extra resources. And I finally I did the some buildings here, some halves to help because I wanted some map control. You want to have buildings all over the map. 
Usually in my tutorials we didn't get to this kind of stage of the game, but you see, I'm adding buildings here, I'm adding buildings here, because even if I listen to the military, it will be so easy to re to regroup, to respam my units. Is it even a word, respam? Never mind. Um, so yeah, I guess this helps now, we'll do the damage versus the uh, Hussars, and he has nothing to stop my Arbalest with. Even though I got a few bad shots versus a cannon here, I still had enough to kill everything. So, I hope you learned a bit how to play the Britons boys. Uh, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and tell me what TV you want to see next, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye boys.